Hi everyone, welcome again for another Gas App Live Lounge, uh, good to be here again. Um, literally, we'll uh, give it a minute or so and we'll get started. Let's just wait for the uh, thumbs up to the screen on my left, if you, or if, if anybody wants to chat to say that they can hear me in the, um, on, on, the, on the group chat here, that would be great. I'm actually hoping I've got this room heated up significantly enough so I don't, um, you know, start losing the feelings in my fingers in the next uh, in the next sort of hour or so. It's quite chilly out here tonight. Again, I've got those extremes of uh, in the summer it's too hot in this room and in the, in the winter it's too cold. OK, so we'll make a start. Uh, I hope you can hear me OK. And thanks for coming along tonight. Um, for those of you that haven't attended any of the sessions that have run before, my name's Scott Young. I'm a technical training specialist here at Residio. Uh, I've now been with Residio, um, well, it'll be three years next March. So, you know, two and three quarter years or so, you could say. And uh, my, one of my main roles is, is to run sort of training sessions. And of course, due to the pandemic and stuff, um, all the training sessions that we've done since March 2020 have pretty much been, well, they've all been online. They've all been webinar based things. But but one of the really good things to come out of that with regards to uh, from a training perspective has been these live lounges. We've had some really good attendances. We've had some really good questions. And um, yeah, we, we, we've, we've hopefully we've spoke about some stuff that's relevant to what we all really want to know about. So as, as far as I'm concerned, when we talk about wiring, I will repeat myself a little bit tonight. So those of you that have been on the S plan, the Y plan and last week's S plan plus course. You will hear and see some stuff that you saw on those previous courses because some of this stuff actually doesn't really change yet when it comes to wiring up these systems, especially when we're talking about wiring up mechanical thermostats and digital thermostats and so on and so forth. So just bear with it because when it comes to W Plan, W Plan systems, in, in my opinion, are something that's making a little bit of a comeback. Um, so when I was an apprentice, over 30 years ago, I really feel my age now, um, W plans were seen sort of like as, as old hat. They, they were sort of like being phased out because the W plan um, system, it, it gives hot water priority. And lots of people, of course, want heating and hot water on at the same time. And that's where the, the Y plan system was, was the more popular one when it came to the three port valve or, or the S plan system was more popular than both most probably. But the W plan system now is making a comeback for many, many different reasons. And, and I'll go through those reasons shortly. Um, but mainly because of the new types of heat sources we're going to be using shortly. Yeah. So hot water priority systems, W plan installations are very, very um, common with renewable heat sources such as heat pumps. And that's one of the reasons why we now see quite a, a, we, we've seen quite a surge of, of inquiries about W plan installations. And, and we're getting a lot of, um, you know, we're getting, you know, we're getting a lot of people ask us about it, especially at some of the trade shows that I've been to in the last month or so. So first of all, at Coventry and then, um, well, yeah, I know we've got a lot of inquiries about W plan on our stand at Chelsea FX last week. So um, what I want to encourage you to do here tonight, guys, is enter some questions in the chat. No, not in the chat. Enter some questions via Gas App. Um, we'll get to some Q&A at the end of today's session. And I'll do my very, very best to answer all of the questions if I can. And um, if I can't give you an answer, I'm sure I can post something in sort of uh, the break time part of Gas App tomorrow morning. Um, there is a competition again tonight. I know last week some of you may have struggled to log in. I'll hold up the, the website address for you to dial into at the end um, because you've got a chance of winning a T4 thermostat tonight for the person that answers the quiz questions the most correct plus the person that answers the questions, you know, in the quickest manner. So both actually um, uh, count towards the best score. So um, we'll do the Q&A right at the end. And, and what you'll need to do is you'll sort of need to open up another browser or even leave this um, uh, this session and to open up another browser potentially. Uh, and uh, you've got the chance of, of winning a T4 thermostat, which, um, again, we will announce the winner on gas app tomorrow uh, by tomorrow afternoon. So, yeah, I think we, we didn't get many people coming along last week, but what I'll do this week based on lessons learned last week 
I'll make sure I hold that web address up for a little bit longer than I did last week. In fact, I'll do it twice. I'll do it now. If you want to log in later on to the quiz with a chance to win uh, a T4 thermostat, this is what you'd need to type into your web browser. So it's pollev.com forward slash Scott Young 490. And when I make my um, quiz live here in my office, it will become live on that particular page that you are dialing in and putting into you as, as a URL. OK, and if I can ask one really big favor here is that you put your full name in. If you don't put your full name in when you sort of uh, put this address into your web browser, then we don't know what your surname is. And it's quite difficult for us then to give the prize to potentially the person that's actually won the quiz. So I'll show this again at the end. I think it's important that I do. Uh, and I'll obviously communicate and let people know as and when we do this. And I will stay live when this presentation, when, when this quiz is gone live and I'll read the questions out. And you've got a little bit longer this week to answer the questions. You've got 30 seconds. And hopefully during this process and this presentation this evening, I'll make sure that I'll highlight uh, as many of the answers and talk about the answers as possible. I don't think I'll miss anything out with regards to the relevance of what that actual quiz is. So I think that's a little bit enough of uh, as, a, as a preamble. So wiring up heating systems isn't everyone's speciality. A lot of people in this industry are not particularly confident of wiring up systems. And of course, yes, I know mainly it's S, Y and S Pan Plus installations. And if you're not confident to do it, then it's unlikely uh, that you'll be confident to do W Plan if you haven't done it before. So tonight's session is purely concentrating on W Plan, talking about that hot water priority uh, diverter valve, not a mid position valve. And I think that's quite an important thing to mention right at the beginning. So the Y Plan valve is a mid-position valve. It can provide heating and hot water at the same time, okay? A W-plan valve is a diverter valve, which gives priority to hot water. And if you think about all of the combination boilers that you work on, yeah, all combination boilers have a hot water priority valve inside of them, yeah? So on a combination boiler, you'll turn on the hot water tap and the valve will obviously stop the flow around the heating system and concentrate in heating up the water that's coming out of the tap. In essence, because W Plan is a sundial, you know, W Plan installation, it basically will prioritize reheating our hot water cylinder and shut off the central heating uh, port as and, as and when that's happening. And of course, as soon as the hot water cylinder is satisfied, it will then switch over to central heating. OK, so we're going to follow a similar process to what we've done in, in, in recent weeks, and I'm going to build up a picture of how to wire up all of these individual components that make up a W plan installation. Because the way I look at wiring up a system is if I wire up all the components correctly and get all those wires into the wiring center, I can then concentrate on the switching wires inside the center. So what we're looking at in the wiring center is to join the relevant wires together to make that installation work. OK, and of course, all of the wiring diagrams yeah, including for W plan is actually inside the wiring guide. So the wiring guide is available as a as an app. OK, so those of you that like an app, you can have it on your phone to access at all times. And of course, you if, if you're a bit old fashioned, I still like to download stuff and believe it or not, print stuff off. I probably would still do that if I was out and about on a regular basis now, probably based on poor eyesight. But that's another story. So, uh, you know, you, you can download it, you can print it off and, and then, of course, use it as and when and if you need to. OK, um, so what we're going to do is we're going to paint this picture and I'm going to talk about the industry. So I'm going to talk about the valve first. I'm going to talk about the W plan diverter valve first. And then, of course, what I'll go on to then will be the actual industry standard backplate. OK, because it's important, you know, how to wire up that program on a W plan installation. And you will notice that it's not too dissimilar to um, what we've talked about on other sessions that we've done on gas app in, in uh, previously. We then talk about mechanical room thermostats and how they should be wired. I'll probably spend slightly less time on that this week, uh, but but make sure that I give you the fundamental basics about how it should be wired up and things to do if it's not wired up correctly. And that will then lead us on to a digital thermostat okay um you know digital thermostats more accurate than mechanical ones they can save money because of the way they work and the and and the better accuracy but of course if you've got a mechanical not wired up properly you can make it even better 
and 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 save the customer more money if you replace it with a digital stat, which might be the only way to get rid of the customer's problem that you've potentially been called out for. We're then going to look at the cylinder thermostat. Now, the cylinder thermostat, if you like, is almost like the central hub that makes the W plan installation work. Um, we're going to use all three electrical connections on the cylinder thermostat. And of course, at the right time when the hot water satisfied, yeah, and therefore the cylinder stat satisfied, terminal two is going to energize the brown wire on that W plan diverter valve to make sure that valve opens up to the central heating port, therefore shutting off the hot water port at the right time. So I've got some graphics to show you with regards to how that actually does that. And, and, and hopefully that will come across in the right way. And then, of course, I've got a wiring diagram at the end that I'm going to run through. Um, and, and hopefully that will that will begin to make sense. I'm going to do tonight's session slightly different to last week. So last week I spent a lot of time looking at lot of cards I had in front of me in the desk. And there will be a couple of those, but I've actually got components here tonight. And I'm going to show certain components and talk about where those different wires need to go as we go through, especially with the programmer backplate, the, the, the room thermostat, and of course the cylinder thermostat. And then at the end, we'll have the Q&A. So, you know, fill up the Q&A with, um, with, with lots of questions. I will endeavor to get through all of them. And then we'll have the quiz at the end. So, yeah, I think that pretty much sums that, 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 that up in, in a nutshell, really. So let's talk about a W plan diverter valve operation. It's pretty straightforward, really. Um, but it might take some people to get a little bit used to based on the fact that more of us now probably know a mid position Y plan valve in a better way. So, with a W plan installation, hot water and heating can be independently timed. But the nature of the system will ensure that the indirect hot water cylinder is always up to temperature before the central heating will come on. Okay, so the central heating will be off for the period of time that there's a call for the hot water to be on. The actual W plan valve itself, okay, only has three wires. It has a live, a neutral, and an earth. If you compare that to um, a, a Y plan mid, mid position valve, the Y plan mid position valve had five wires, yeah? A W plan's only got three. And of course then the live brown wire is only energized when it needs the central heating port to open once the hot water is actually up to temperature. Or if it goes off on the timer, the same thing would happen then. So there are big advantages of using um, a W plan installation, and it's worth making some mental notes of this. So those advantages actually include being able to install lower output boilers, because you'll never need to supply both heating and hot water at the same time. So, for example, let's say um, you're installing a heat only or a system boiler. And let's say the overall heat output that you need for heating and hot water to be on at the same time is 16 kilowatt. You could be caught in between two different heat only or system boiler sizes here. You know, a lot of manufacturers make 15 and 18 kilowatt boilers. And generally, yeah, the bigger output boiler is more expensive than the smaller output boiler. So I've, I've seen this a number of times. What people do in this situation is because they need 16 kilowatts overall for heating and hot water to be on at the same time. They can choose that lower output 15 kilowatt boiler because it will never need that full 16 kilowatts with both of them having demand at the same time. So it will concentrate on the hot water first, which will use a, you know, maybe two or three kilowatts worth of heat to get that cylinder up to temperature. And then, of course, when it's satisfied, it will switch over generally then to supply to supply that larger output, uh, but not an excess of what it actually needs because it won't be able to do that. But but anyway, it, 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 you, you can actually size boilers smaller to make it work better with a W plan installation, which might save a little bit of money uh, in conjunction with installing that, that, that boiler for that customer. Uh, I do see this and have seen this on social housing contracts where, um, where obviously if you're fitting thousands of boilers a year, um, then it can be quite a significant saving by having uh, a W plan installation. The second main advantage would be that they are ideal for use for high input, high recovery hot water cylinders. So if you've got an unvented hot water cylinder on a W plan installation with the full concentration of reheating that cylinder as quickly as possible, based on those hot water cylinders, those unvented cylinders ticking all the British standard boxes for recovery times and recovery rates, just makes that happen a bit more quicker or a bit more quickly, I should say. 
And of course, in the future, these are ideal for heat pump installations. OK, absolutely fantastic for them. And that's one of the reasons. And as I mentioned earlier on, as well, we've had a bit of a resurgence in, in people being interested in W plan installs. Um, the big disadvantage, and it's no different from installing a combination boiler in someone's house. Hot water priority boilers, hot water priority systems are not suitable for premises that have high demands of hot water. So, for example, I can think of a situation this happened to me uh, when I worked for one of the two boiler manufacturers I did for quite some time. I actually went out to a property once where the complaint actually was the fact that the central heating never seemed to switch on. And what I noticed when I was there is that they were running a catering business from, from the basement, which meant that they were using a lot of hot water. And because this was actually with a combi, and because they were using lots and lots of hot water all of the time, you know, it was always in hot water mode, therefore not allowing that central heating to come on, and therefore the house was cold. So it's really important to ask questions when you install before you install a W plan. And if you are installing a W plan, it's always a good idea to make sure that the customers themselves fully understand exactly what that's going to do. And, and that, that's a really important thing, in, in, in my humble opinion. So what I'm going to do at this point, I'm now going to start talking about the components in, an, in, in a W plan installation. I'm going to start talking about um, the industry standard backplate, first of all. OK, so just bear with me a second. I'm just going to change my camera view, which is quite important so I can actually show you the, um, the, the, the program of backplate. So just bear with me a second. I'm just going to turn things around here. And you should now see that lovely Residio sign, our logo. And let me just pull this in here. So this is a programmer. Yeah, I, I know you know that's a programmer, by the way. But in essence, if you're going to wire one of these up, it's important that you fully understand what those electrical connections are. Now, generally, when I talk about the industry standard backplate, I don't talk and don't spend a lot of time talking about the earth, neutral and live supply. Yeah, because they're pretty straightforward and everybody understands what they are. It's terminals one, two, three and four that actually do create a little bit of confusion. Now, the first thing to make a note of here is when we talk about an industry standard backplate, we're not talking about the physical size of the backplate itself. We're talking about the industry standard electrical connections being in the same order as some of our competitors programmer backplates as well. So look, I can show you one of these. I'm not going to tell you what brand this is off of. This is an industry standard backplate. Neutral live. Sorry, let me deliver. Neutral live. One, two, three and four. The only difference here is that the Earth Park is in a different position compared to ours. But in essence, if one of our competitions programmers was to fail and you needed to change it and you hopefully you change it for one of our st699s you could literally remove the programmer the old one and you could clip our programmer the one i showed you a minute ago directly onto that existing backplate without having to change any of the fixed wiring that was in this industry standard backplate anyway i thought i'd show that so let's have a look and um, and talk about what these terminals one two three and four actually are so if you're ever in doubt as to what terminals one two three and four are on the reverse of the programmer and i'll show you that there's always a wiring diagram on the back which tells you what terminals one two three and four actually are okay so terminal one okay is a hot water off terminal that's actually only used in conjunction with Y plan installations. OK, so on the W plan we're talking about tonight, we won't be talking about terminal one because it's not used in, in this installation. Terminal two is our hot water. Sorry, is our central heating off terminal. So terminal two, we generally do not use terminal two. Well, we don't use it on S plan. We don't use it on Y plan. We don't use it on S plan plus, And we also don't use it on W plan. So it's an unused terminal. Um, if you if you ever wondered as the reason why we, we've got a terminal two based on how we install things here in the UK is because we make these products and sell them all over the world. And therefore, in a different country, in a different area, they would probably use terminal two, hence why it's manufactured in this way. Terminal three is our hot water on terminal and terminal four 
is our central heating on terminal. OK, so with a W plan installation, we'd have an earth and a neutral and a live wire in position. Uh, we don't need terminal one connected because that's for Y plan installations, hot water off only. We don't need a wire in terminal two, which is our central heating off terminal. But we will need to wire up our hot water on and our central heating on on terminals three and four. So when the program is actually calling for central heating, what happens here is that the internal switch inside the programmer will put 230 volts AC onto terminal four to start that succession to bring in the boiler and pump on. OK. If we've got a demand for hot water, it will energize terminal three for hot water on and, of course, start the hot water on process. So everything starts from here. So, you know, if you're going to wire one of these up from scratch, you'll have five wires, earth, neutral, live wires. OK, nothing in one, nothing in two, a wire in terminal three and a wire in terminal four for central heating on. And that's how you would basically wire that up. So, you know, if there's if there's any questions on that, feel free to stick them in the chat and we can we can have a conversation about that. Well, I know we can't have a conversation, but I can definitely answer any any questions that you might have with that at, at the end if needed. OK, so let's move on to the next component, which will actually be your mechanical room thermostat. So I'll just bring this into view. I hope you can see all this uh, quite well. I'm going to take the front cover off of this mechanical thermostat. So there's only one correct way to wire up a mechanical thermostat, guys, and that is for it to have three wires to it. So what I'm going to do quickly, and it's just so you can see the electrical terminals a little bit better than I can see them here, and hopefully it makes it clearer for you as well, is what you can see here, guys, you've got five electrical terminals. So from the left, you've got an earth, you've got terminal two, terminal three, Terminal four and terminal one. And the three electrical connections that need to be connected on this room thermostat is we need a wire coming in on terminal to uh, terminal one. We need a wire leaving terminal three and we need a neutral wire wired into terminal two because terminal four is not used on a mechanical room thermostat for generally for systems that are installed in the UK. Now, I'll talk about the earth wire first specifically. So this is a double insulated component. So let's say you were changing a mechanical stat for a new mechanical stat and there was an earth wire already there. Then, yes, you would most definitely wire that earth into the earth park. If there wasn't an earth wire in conjunction with that old mechanical stat that was there, you don't have to run another earth wire to this thermostat because the double insulated nature of this particular thermostat means it ticks all of the electrical safety boxes to not need an earth wire to it, okay? So, when we turn on our central heating, or when there is a central heating demand, and obviously with the W plan, that actually comes after the hot water is satisfied. But if the program is on for central heating, it will send 230 volts AC from terminal four on the programmer back plate. And that wire in the wiring center will be connected to the wire that comes out and is wired in on terminal one. So 230 volts AC will always come in on terminal one. Now, if this thermostat is calling for heat, that 230 volts AC will travel through the micro switch and it will leave terminal three. OK, so 230 volts AC leaves terminal three and the wire, OK, from terminal three will then obviously be wired into the wiring center. But very importantly, because of the nature of the way that a mechanical thermostat works, you need a neutral wire into terminal two. And the reason why you need a neutral wire into terminal two is based on the anticipator that's actually installed as part of this thermostat. OK, so an anticipator needs to be connected to neutral. So it has electricity flowing through it when there's a demand, which enables that anticipator to resist the flow of electricity through it, which means it will give off some heat to make the bellows more reactionary to air temperature change. OK, because mechanical stats are not installed in their perfect location. So, yeah, we know where mechanical stats are fitted and all thermostats generally, they're fitted on the wall. Yeah. But the perfect location for a mechanical stat like this is to be dangling from three core flex in the middle of a room. And of course, because we're never going to do that, 
and it's a fitted um, adjacent to where it's fitted, where it's ideally fitted on the wall. There's a certain amount of lag involved between middle of the room and where it's fitted on the wall. So to reduce that lag, to make this work more accurately, being wired up to a neutral wire on terminal two will obviously make the bellows more reactionary to air temperature change. You know, that mechanical operation that a mechanical thermostat has to make it fall in line and be more accurate in situations um, when, when it's wired in that way. OK, so one thing I will say, you sometimes will find mechanical thermostats only wired up with two wires. So you'll have a wire coming in on terminal one, you'll have a wire coming out of terminal three and nothing in terminal two, no neutral wire. The complaint for customers there generally or would be that it doesn't seem to sense temperature in the way that they'd expect it, expect it to. The accuracy is off. And the reason for that is because, you know, the anticipator is not connected to neutral and then it can't really get, <clears throat> get over the lag issue that mechanical thermostats suffer from. Uh, and, and I know I've made this mistake, and some of you would have heard me say this previously. I have definitely swapped a two-wired older mechanical thermostat for a new mechanical thermostat and fitted the same two wires in the same two positions, only to be called out there in the future for the same problem down the road. The only repair for an incorrectly two-wired mechanical thermostat is to replace it with a digital thermostat. And I'm going to show you one of those now. So please remember this in on one, out on three. Don't forget the neutral two. OK, that's a really good thing to remember when you're wiring up a mechanical stack. So this is a T4. For those of you that haven't seen it, I'll just tilt that so you don't get too much glare off the camera that's above it. This T4 actually, or, or a T, T4 series thermostat is a prize for that, that person that answers the most questions quickly and correctly later on. So this is a wired digital thermostat. This is a wired programmable digital thermostat. And behind this, screwed to the wall, will be the back plate. Okay? And if I just drop this flat down, it exposes the wire connections. So for those of you that have been on previous sessions with me, okay, you will know that this only needs two electrical connections, as I mentioned a minute ago. It does not need a neutral wire whatsoever. So if you, have a, if you had a perfectly properly wired mechanical stat in on one, out on three, and a neutral wire wired in on two, the neutral wire would just need to be isolated because there's nowhere physically for you to connect that here on these electrical connections. So the wire that was in on terminal one of the mechanical stat, and it's always a good idea to take photographs of you know, existing wiring before you then uh, put something new in. The wire that was wired in on terminal one should be wired in on terminal A on, on, on a digital thermostat. And the wire that was in terminal three, yeah, remember in on one, out on three. So this is in on A, out on B. So the wire that was in terminal three should be wired into terminal B, okay? And then, of course, once that's wired in, um, you can simply then shut that back plate and then that T4 thermostat literally just clips onto the front um, and is secured on the wall. So you've got the chance to win one of these little fellas later on if you can answer those questions as accurately and as quickly as you can. So that's how you change it from a mechanical to a digital thermostat if you needed to. Now, I will say that it doesn't have to be a digital. Um, pro sorry, it doesn't have to be a programmable room thermostat. We actually do hardwired standard digital thermostats like the DT90. And the DT90 will have terminal A and terminal B, and that's it, no neutral wire. But instead of you being able to program all the times and settings and holiday functions, which a T4 would give you, that, that digital standard thermostat, instead of having the dial on, it would literally just have a plus and a minus button and an economy button, uh, and that's all it has. So there's no programming functionality on a DT90 you would do the time control um, on that W plan system with a DT90 from the programmer. And therefore then that, that then just that this just keeps that um, that DT90 as, as the digital thermostat. Okay. So I hope that's, um, that's quite clear. Um, and I hope you can see the numbers on these, on these thermostats and on these components as I go through them, because now what we're going to do is I'm going to talk about, the, um, the cylinder thermostat, which is the central piece of 
W plan installations. Just bear with me a second. I'm having a little bit of a technical issue here. So, cylinder thermostat, okay? So for those of you that have been on other sessions, on S plan, we wire in on one and we come out of the common, okay? On Y plans, we wire in on the common. When there's a call for hot water to be on, we come out of terminal one. And when satisfied on Y plans, this will switch between the common and, and terminal two. OK, and terminal two would then be connected to all of your hot water off connections that you would need to have on a, on a Y plan installation. On an S plan plus, we come in on terminal one and we leave on the common. So on W plans, we do use all three of these electrical connections. OK, and the reason why we use all three is because we're going to use the satisfied terminal, which is terminal two to basically switch the brown wire of that W plan diverter valve when the hot water is satisfied because it will switch between common and two when satisfied and that's when it will energize that valve on the brown wire and of course bring on the boiler and the pump and you'll see that in conjunction with what you'll see on the wiring diagram itself at the end of the session but I think it's quite important to fully understand how this actually works and that's where I've got this little graphic here just to show you how this actually should be wired up. So on the left hand side, we've got the programmer. OK, we've got a room thermostat for central heating. And of course, we've got our cylinder thermostat for, um, for, for the hot water demand. So in a nutshell, if we have a central heating demand from the programmer, it makes the internal switch. And that's terminal three from the industry standard backplate. And that would be wired in, as you can see, onto terminal one. OK. So it comes in on terminal one, and when it's calling for heat, that 230 volts AC will leave the common connection, and then it will go to power up the boiler and pump. It doesn't need to power the valve, because obviously that valve is in its sprung return position, so it's in its hot water position to allow flow around the hot water circuit for the hot water cylinder. Okay? So at any time that this satisfies, the cylinder thermostat will then switch between C and 2. So if it switches then between C and 2, if there's no demand from the programmer and no demand through the thermostat, it will just switch everything off. Yeah? Because there'll be no demand here from the hot water side of things at all through that, um, through that cylinder thermostat. And that could be because it's satisfied on the, on, on the hot water, yeah, it's satisfied on the hot water cylinder or satisfied on the programmer itself. When we get a central heating demand, yeah, so the hot water, uh, the cylinder thermostat here is satisfied. There's still a demand from the programmer, but because this is up to its temperature, you can see that it switches between the common and terminal two. So if we've now got a demand from central heating in the programmer, which is terminal four, we're coming in on one on a mechanical stat and out on three on a mechanical stat, or in on A and out on B, we can then, as you can see now, Energized 230 volts AC will come in on the common. Yeah, it will go out on terminal two and it will send 230 volts AC on the brown wire on that W plan valve. It energizes the motor and it literally opens up the central heating port and obviously closes off the hot water port. So flow can then literally be uh, driven around your central heating circuit. And of course, as we come through from the programmer and the room thermostat and we go through to the brown wire, you can see here that we're also connected to the boiler and the pump. So in essence, it will energize the boiler and the pump at the same time that obviously it energizes, um, uh, same time it energizes the valve. And of course, any time if the temperature drops within the cylinder, it will make between one and C again, which means it would de-energize the brown wire, the valve would spring return, and then it only allows flow around the hot water cylinder coil again. Okay. So I hope that's that's explained that in a in a pretty decent way. I got a bit tongue tied then when I was talking about it, so apologies for that. That sometimes happens when you do uh, when you do live uh, live training. And um, what we're going to look at now is a W plan wiring diagram. So I don't know how well you can see it. I think I need to just do something here with my so let's do it over there. Straighten it up a little bit. There we go. Okay, 
so if you're going to wire up a w plan installation do it in conjunction with the wiring guides that you can get and download on your apps or, or download it to your computer whichever way you want to do it and I'll, i'm going to walk you through how to wire this up okay so first of all if you're not very familiar with wiring up heating systems our wiring center as you can see has terminals one through to ten and what you'll physically notice when you're wiring up on a standard wiring center is that terminals one two and three are larger physically larger than terminals four to ten and the reason why terminals one two and three are larger is because they will contain a number yeah, more than two, potentially three wires in each one of those terminal positions so that they can actually accommodate those those wires. So if you've wired up all of these components in the way I've described as have gone through to cut down the amount of wires that are looking at you, it's a good what it's a good sort of practice to put all of your permanent lives into terminal one. All of your neutrals from all of the components. So you can see you've got a neutral from the boiler and the pump. You've got a neutral on the valve. You'll have a neutral from a mechanical stat, but not a digital one. And you'd wire them all into terminal two. And then literally anything that's got an earth, yeah, pump, boiler, valve. You might have an earth at the room stat. You might have an earth on the programmer back plate. You, and, and obviously coming in from your um, fuse spur, you'll have an earth as well. So you wire them all into terminal three. So once you've got these large numbers of wires installed into terminals one, two, and three, you're then literally left with the switching wires that you're going to connect together to make this system work in terminals four to 10. So first of all, if we've got a hot water demand on the programmer, and this is representing the program in the bottom left hand side, terminal three will be energized from the industry standard backplate. So from terminal three, we would need a wire based on this wiring diagram to be wired in on terminal six. Okay, from terminal six then, we would need a wire from terminal six, as you can see on the diagram, coming in and then going out, connected in on terminal one of the cylinder thermostat. OK, so that would that that would that would um, obviously be a good start to do that. OK, and then what you could do is then your common connection from the cylinder thermostat, as you can see, would then be wired into terminal seven and connected into terminal seven. Yeah. That would be connected to a wire that is connected to terminal three of your room thermostat. But also in terminal seven, you've got your switch lives to your boiler and your pump. So, OK, if you've got a three wired boiler that that, that that literally just just a switch live doesn't need any pump over on any overrun facilities like some older boilers that you might still see out there. You're, you're, you're quite literally, guys, your earth and your neutrals will, will be connected to two and three from your boiler and the pump. And then of course the switch live uh, to your boiler and pump will be connected into terminal seven, okay? If it's a permanently live boiler that you've got, then you'll, you'll have four wires going out to the boiler. You'd wire permanent lives into, it, live neutral and earth into terminals one, two, and three. And then the switch live from the boiler would be wired into terminal seven. So we now need to facilitate the hot water, sorry, the central heating circuit. So terminal four in the programmer, as you can see, the wire from terminal four is connected um, into terminal four in the wiring center itself. And from terminal four in the wiring center, there's a wire leaving there that's connected in on terminal one of your room thermostat. OK. So as you can see here, if we've got a, once the hot water is satisfied, if our central heating is calling for heat, it energizes from terminal four of the back plate into terminal four of the wiring center. It goes into the room thermostat on terminal one. OK, if the room stat's calling for heat, that 230 volts AC goes through the micro switch inside the room stat from one out of three. The wire from three goes into terminal seven. Yeah. To the common. And then terminal two from the cylinder stat, as you can see here, would then be wired into terminal five, which is the bit I hadn't mentioned yet. OK. And in terminal five, it's then also connected to the brown wire that's going to energize the motor in this W plan diverter valve. And of course, because we've got voltage on terminal seven, it's going to energize the boiler and the pump. So, of course, any time the cylinder thermostat satisfies, it switches between the one and the common. And of course, you'll see then it would break the supply of power going to the brown wire, which de-energizes it and then switches it off.
And then, of course, the boiler stays on so we can circulate heat for it to actually then run around the central heating system. So that, in essence, is how you'd wire up that W plan valve. I'm just going to change the angle of the camera slightly. Um, so let me just do this. Remember how it's done. Sit that back there. Um, there we go. So, you know, that's actually taken a little bit of uh, a, a little less time than what uh, S and y, uh, S and Y plan and S plan plus has taken to explain. Um, but in essence, you know, if you're if you're wiring up one of these from scratch and you've got a wiring guide and you've wired up all those components right, then you should be confident enough. Hopefully you'll be confident enough to wire one of these systems up. Just a couple of things I haven't mentioned with regards to the W plan valve itself. You can just change the motor if you ever needed to. You can change the head. And just for clarity, and I'm sure you know this anyway, you couldn't put a Y-plan head on a W-plan valve because the two actuators are completely different. Remember, you've got five wires on the uh, on, on the mid-position Y-plan valve, and you've only got three, a live, a neutral, and earth on a W-plan valve. And, 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 of course, the same rules go if you're changing an actuator on a W-plan valve. You know, you're looking for three signs that you don't have to drain that system down to change it. Uh, quite literally, if you look for the little bump on the silver cover on the top, if it's got the little bump on it, you don't have to drain the system down. The second important point to see, if, if you're not sure about that, is there should be a physical air gap that you can see through between the top of the actual brass valve body, the flat part, and the underside of the actuator. If you can see through it, you don't have to drain it down. If you've missed the first two, then um, if you undo more than two screws, you're going to get wet. So uh, hopefully you'll never go that far down the road to um, to do that. But I'm sure that's just reaffirming things that I've mentioned previously. OK, so I hope that's been useful. And I think what I'll do now is I'm just going to liven up my other screen because um, I want to go through and, and look at uh, any questions that may have been submitted by you guys while I was running through that um, through that little session then I was just doing. And I hope that came across okay with the components. I thought it would be more interesting to see the actual products tonight other than just looking at, you know, uh, different things with regards to what we looked at last week. So let me just have a quick look on, um, uh, look for any questions. I'll just get my iPad in front of me, just refresh it so I can see. Um, Oh, good. We've got some questions here. That's great. So um, the first question here is from uh, Andre Babina. How many zones are in W plan? So, Andre, um, I, th I think you probably know the answer now. Anyway, you've got um, you've got a hot water priority valve. So in essence, you've got that uh, hot water zone, which is given priority over that um, over that central heating zone. So, yeah, you've got one zone of heating and one zone of hot water. OK, got a good question from Nigel Baker uh, and Nigel's asked. Oh, one second. What's the easiest way to fault find on zone valve and three port valves? OK, so look, I'm going to give a general point here um, and I think it's 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 a good point to make. And it's it's something that a lot of you guys out there probably don't know even exists. And I'll give you the answer, Nigel. I'll get to that point. On the Residio Installer Toolbox, if you went onto the support section, there's something in there called Knowledge Base. And if you went into Knowledge Base and literally typed in a question about anything to do with Honeywell Home uh, products, Residio products, you can probably get the answers that you want from that website because there'll be there's lots of knowledge articles in there based on many, many questions that have been asked, like what Nigel's asked with regards to fault finding on, on uh, two port and three port valves. So, Nigel, so Nigel, so I suppose the short answer here, and I'll, I'll try and go through this as quickly as possible. So let's look at the W plan valve first, yeah, which has only got three wires to it, alive and neutral and earth. The thing to remember here is that if you're doing live testing, I wouldn't recommend doing any live testing unless you're really confident and competent to use a multimeter. I think that's a really important thing to, uh, to get across because you need to do this safely. And there's no way that you should ever do live electrical testing with neon screwdrivers or, or, or information of that type. Or information of that type 
products of that type. So you want to use a decent multimeter and know how to use it first of all. So in essence, that brown wire on the W plan valve will only have 230 volts AC on it if the hot water is satisfied or if there's no demand for hot water and there's a central heating demand. So what you'd look for in the wiring center, Nigel, with a W plan valve would be to put a central heating demand on that system with the hot water turned off. And if you can identify the brown wire to that W plan valve, that means that that brown wire should get 230 volts AC on that brown wire when there's a demand for central heating only. OK, so a two port zone valve. OK, so on a two port zone valve, you've got an earth, a neutral and a brown wire, which is the live in from the thermostat for the zone that it's controlling, the, the zone that's controlling the flow round. OK, you've then got an orange and a grey wire. So first of all, the grey wire is a permanent live supply. So if there's no demand on that zone valve at all, there should always be 230 volts AC on the grey wire um, for that two port zone valve. When there is a demand on the two port zone valve, what happens is we will get a call from the programmer through the thermostat, cylinder stat or, or, um, or run thermostat. And then once you get a call from both the programmer and the thermostat for the valve it's controlling, you end up with 230 volts AC coming in on the brown wire to energize the motor. And then after 15 seconds or so, once it's the motor is energized, you'll have 230 volts on the gray, you'll have 230 volts on the brown if there's a call for heat. And when it makes the internal micro switch, you'll also have 230 volts AC leaving that zone valve on the orange wire. So you can check the live voltages there in that way if you wanted to. OK, so on a, um, uh, on a, on a Y plan valve is a little bit more complicated. OK, so when you've got a hot water only demand on a mid position, um, on a mid position Y plan valve, you should have 230 volts AC only on the orange wire because you've got an orange, a white, a gray, a neutral and an earth. OK, so hot water only, you'll have 230 volts AC on the on the orange. So if you've got heating and hot water on at the same time, you'll have 230 volts AC on the white wire, which is the central heating on wire. You'll have 230 volts AC on the orange wire. And they're the only two wires you should have voltage on when there's a demand for heating and hot water on a mid position valve. So when you've got heating only, you'll have 230 volts AC on the white wire. You'll have 230 volts AC on the gray wire because your hot water is now off. And you'll have 230 volts AC on the orange wire as well. OK, so it's um, that, that's basically how you can fault find in conjunction with the live voltages on those different valves. I hope I hope that's explained, uh, explained that point. Um, oh, I didn't realize. Uh, thanks, Steve. I didn't realize that we had a loss of signal. I hope that uh, I wasn't away for too long. I don't know if anyone else experienced that, but um, um, yeah, I've only just seen that. Uh, okay, so a question from Matthew Allison uh, Why aren't cylinder thermostats earthed? The reason why they're not earthed is because it's the same as the mechanical room stat and the same as the programmer back plate, they are all double insulated components, which is why it doesn't need to be earth because it ticks that electrical safety box, meaning it doesn't need it. OK, so uh, Mick Reedy, Mick Reddy, sorry if I've mispronounced that, uh, Mick. Can you explain why a boiler manufacturer would ask to install W plan with their weather comp on their heat only boiler? Um, yeah, pr pretty much. In essence, um, on their heat only boiler, they don't want reduced flow temperatures, which weather compensation gives to replenish the heat inside a hot water cylinder. Because Generally, you need a higher flow temperature to be delivered to the system to replenish your hot water temperature. And of course, if it was constantly looking at weather compensation at that point, and of course, um, the temperature outside was warmer, you would have a lower flow temperature leaving the boiler and it wouldn't satisfy the demand for your hot water. So, so that's the reason why, Mick, I hope that. But all, what I would say there is always consult the boiler manufacturer's instructions on how that should be wired. Uh, Richard, I've made a note of your comments regarding the Residio installer toolbox. Um, uh, do you know what? I'm going to try it here now because I've got it on the other screen, hopefully. Let me just check it. 
I'm just clicking on it now. Okay, well, um, yeah, uh, Richard, you're, you're right. It doesn't seem to be responding right now. I will make sure I report that fault. But trust me, that's the first time I've ever been on it and it wasn't responding. No, I would say that, wouldn't I? But no, it's true. I'll, uh, I'll, I'll make someone aware of that uh, as soon as I can. But it is a really good source of information for, uh, for questions that you want to type into the knowledge base. Okay. So, um, yeah, there we go. So thanks for the questions, guys. Really do appreciate that. Uh, Samuel Dunzeeth has asked, do we do a wireless cylinder the thermostat? Um, yeah, we do. Um, um, we do wireless cylinder thermostats in conjunction with RF squared packs and such the like. So uh, have a look at have a look at those, and uh, hopefully that would suit your purpose for what you need. Um, uh, Craig McGregor, thank you for your kind comments. Much appreciated. I, um, I I always hope that it does reach people on a way that that that, and it's explained in a way that it gets across in the right way. Uh, well, what I would say, and I always close wiring sessions with these with this particular statement. When it comes to wiring, practice makes perfect. And if you don't do it often enough, I believe not doing it often enough is the reason why plumbing, heating and gas engineers aren't always confident of wiring up heating systems from scratch. There are people that, that, that can remember stuff and, and always, you know, always remember it. They might have a break of three or four years from doing something, but they still remember to do it. There are other people that aren't as fortunate and can't retain that information. And there's certain amounts of information that I can retain. But in essence, when I joined Residio two and a bit years ago, um, in essence, I had to learn how to wire up heating systems from scratch again. I had to learn how to do it not with a diagram. Yeah, because I could do it with a diagram, but I couldn't do it without one. Now I'm quite fortunate I've done it enough again that I don't need to diagram the wire up S plan, Y plan, W plan installations. But the one I've probably got to think about a little bit more Funnily enough, is the wiring is the is the W plan wiring um, uh, wiring diagram um, because again that's something that I've only really spent and concentrated on a little bit more in the last year based on the extra demand for the information for it. So go away and practice this stuff. You can make your own wiring boards out and, and up with the components you've probably got in the back of your van if you work for yourself, or you can get from you know your employer. If they allow you to use it to practice this, then you might even have training boards in your, you know, in, 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 in a room at work, in a break room or something like that, if you're ever in that situation. So practice really makes perfect and give it a try um, and do it as often as you can. And then in the future, if you're not doing it already, you can offer that service to customers to wire up those systems yourself instead of maybe getting someone else into wire it for you. So you're losing a little bit of your profit by you know, giving money to someone else to come and do it for you. We now get a lot of electricians, and there's probably a few electricians on tonight's session who, who obviously are wiring up uh, heating systems, and, and we get large numbers of electricians coming on our wiring courses based on that fact. Um, so um, do we have courses? And that's from uh, Radostin Penov. Uh, yes, we do have courses. At the moment, we're on a bit of a wind down towards Christmas. The numbers on training courses uh, tend to wane a little bit um, uh, between now and the new year. Um, there are a few online webinars between now and about the 8th of December that you can book free of charge. Uh, I believe we've got an S and a Y plan uh, wiring sessions coming up in the next two weeks. If you go on the Residio Installer Toolbox, hopefully you'll click on it and be able to book it. Um, then, then you can book it free of charge and you can come along and, and learn about that. So our online webinars will start again um, towards the end of January. And what I would say at that point as well, we would hope early next year to be in a position where we may be able to offer the face to face wiring courses again. So you can come along. Yes, you will hear some of the stuff you've heard, the theory side of this stuff on tonight's session and on the other sessions that I've done. But then you're able to get your hands on our new wiring boards and wire S plan and Y plan, et cetera, up from scratch to get that practical experience that, that you might be looking for. Okay. So now then let's, um, let's have a look at uh, this quiz now. So what I'm going to do now, guys, is I'm just going to click on my other screen and I'm going to um, turn that on. But 
let me just do something else here. So if you want to enter the competition, you need to type this website address into a browser. So I'll keep it here for a couple of minutes. And as you can see, it's pollev.com forward slash Scott Young, and that's Scott with two T's. Young as, yeah, I'm still very young, I wish, 490. So if you type that into a web browser, uh, and then once you type that in and uh, obviously press enter, it will ask you to input your name. So please put your first and your surnames in, guys, because if we have six Garys on the call and six Garys come first to six, we wouldn't know who to tell actually won it. So please put your full name in there. And what I'm going to do shortly, um, I'm actually going to um, start the quiz. I'm actually going to make it live now. So when you first join it, nothing might not happen until I say now here. But for those of you that are having to drop off the stream, um, if you give us literally a minute, a minute or two, the quiz will start. And all you've got to do is answer the questions as quickly as you can. And the person who answers the questions quickest and gets the most answers correct will win the T4 thermostat. So um, I'm just going to get my screen up here again now. I just need to do something over here. I need to put it into um, presentation mode for people to be able to see it. So one last time. Polyv.com. In fact, you know what I'm going to do? Because I've only just seen that it's actually on there. I'm going to type it in here. Yeah, so everyone can see it. Polyv.com forward slash my name 490. So everyone's got it. So if you join late for whatever reason, you can still, it's there. It's there as a reference for you. So one last time before I make this live. I don't think I gave people enough time last week to do it. So uh, that's probably why I'm overdoing it this week. So, you know, no doubt I'll get some feedback saying I need to spend less time next time. So that's what it is. So I'm going to make this live. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to read the questions out. There's seven questions. You've got 30 seconds to answer those questions as quickly as you can. So let me just make it live now. OK, so the first question is, how many wires does a W plan diverter valve have? So I'm going to press go. You've got 30 seconds from now to answer it. So all you need to do is touch the answer on your on your screen. So how many wires does the W plan diverter valve has have even it's three, four, five or six wires? Try and think of the difference that I mentioned a few times between Y and W plan valves. Five seconds left. OK, thanks for those answers. OK. Question two, I'm going to read the question first. Which of the statements that you're going to see in a second best describes how a W plan system works? You've now got 30 seconds. So W plan systems allow both the heating and hot water, sorry, the hot water and central heating to be on at the same time. W plan systems give priority to central heating. W plan systems give priority to hot water. There's 13 seconds left. Five. And that's that. OK, so I'll move on to the next question. Tells me how many people have answered. So thank you for those of you that have put some answers in. OK, it's neck and neck between a couple of you at the moment. So what advantages does a W plan system have? 30 seconds from now. Ideal for use with high input, high recovery hot water cylinders. Lower output boilers can be installed as it will never need to supply both heat and hot water at the same time. Ideal for heat pump applications. Or are all of those answers correct? 
you got 10 seconds left, guys. Okay. Thank you for those that answered. Next question. It's still neck and neck. What colour wire on a W plan valve is energised when there is a central heating only demand? 30 seconds. Grey, blue, orange, brown. This is now when I'm thinking, did I make sure that I got across all of the answers so you can all adequately answer these questions? Have I forgotten something? I'll know shortly. Um, so far, I haven't forgotten one, which is good. Five seconds to go. <clears throat> OK, thank you for answering those of you that have. Let's have a look at the leaderboard. Oh, it's still neck and neck. OK, so the next question is coming up shortly on a W plan installation. Does a digital thermostat need a neutral wire connected to it? It's a yes or no answer. 50-50, guys. 25 seconds left to answer it. Ten seconds. Three. That's it. Done. OK. OK, fantastic. Um, let's have a look at the leaderboard. Any change there yet? No, it's still neck and neck. Some good answers here, guys. So the next question is a statement again. So I'll read it first and then I'll make it live. Which statement describes the cylinder thermostat circuit for when there's a hot water demand from the programmer? Is it in on terminal one, out on terminal C, in on terminal C, out on terminal one, in on terminal C, out on terminal two? If you were wiring this up, you've got 15 seconds left. Ten seconds. Two, one. Great stuff, guys. Thank you very much. All mixed answers there, but I think I knew that one would get you thinking. OK, great. So, yeah, it's still very tight. Um, there's a number of you still in this, by the way. So I suppose for some of you, this might be the tie breaking question. So this question is going to go live in a second. Which statement best describes the cylinder thermostat circuit for when the hot water is satisfied and if there is a call for central heating? It's a bit wordy, but so apologies for that. It's live now. Is it in on terminal C, out on terminal one, in on terminal C, out on terminal two, in on terminal two, out on terminal one? Got 20 seconds left. So you've got plenty of time to read the answers to these questions, guys. Think about what we went through with those two diagrams a little bit earlier on. There's five seconds left. I know there's probably another answer due. Three, two, one. Okay, great stuff. OK, so what I'm going to do, because I know I'm still live on YouTube at this moment in time, I know who's uh, who's won. And we will post the answer to this. I'm just going to take a photograph so I don't forget who's won. I've got your full name. There we go. I'm going to stop sharing. Um, I'm going to stop the quiz now. Thank you very much for those of you that have... Um, that have dialed in for that. Apologies for those of you that, that, that maybe struggle to get on it. Um, I'll be interested in any feedback about how you thought the poll EV thing actually worked there, but we thought it would be a different way uh, to pick a winner uh, on these last two sessions, something a little bit different, which, 
we're trying to make things more interactive when we do live webinars and so on and so forth. So anyway, so thank you very much for coming along tonight, guys. Really appreciate the time that you all take to uh, sit through one of these sessions. I hope you found it useful. Remember, there's lots of good information on Residio.com, product information, wiring guides, um, wiring diagrams. Technical support is there if you ever need it. Option three is, is, is the option you choose when you get through on the phone number if you ever need to speak to somebody. It's always a good idea to actually be in front of the problem that you might be having, whether it be product or wiring related. If you have any product issues at all with any of our products, it's always a good idea to make sure you're in contact with your local area sales manager. And, um, you know, we're always interested in quality control. And if you if you ever have any, any, any issues with any components or products, return those components and products so we can look into as to why, if it has failed prematurely, why it has. But, you know, it doesn't happen very often, but we are all about customer service and we, we want to know if you're having any problems. So being in contact with your area sales manager is, is, is one of the best things that, that, that you can do from that end. So thanks very much for your time, guys. Look forward to maybe seeing some of you again. Not that I can see any of you, of course. But it'd be, it'd be uh, yeah, we've got another session, I believe, on the 7th of December where we're going to be talking about um, TRVs and system balancing. So if you want to download the TRV and balancing app, Honeywell Home app, um, then preload up that to your phone before the 7th of December. We're going to talk about why you should balance heating systems. And we're going to specifically talk about our TRVs and the new balancing insert in conjunction with the balancing app that makes you balance heating systems a lot quicker and it's a lot less time consuming. So I look forward to seeing you then. Thanks for your time. And um, yeah, have a good evening.